All right, cybersecurity threats on the rise. So what can you do to protect you and your assets? Let's go back to JJ now on how to take those proper precautions. Cyber security, it is a big conversation to have these days. Threats are on the rise and knowing how hackers and thieves behave before you get hacked will help you fight back. Craig Fraley is here from Clark County Credit Union. He is the Director of Business Development to talk a little bit about cybersecurity. Good to have you, Craig. How are you? Great, JJ. Great to see you. Well, here we are in front of our devices. I know I've got two computers in front of me. I've got my cell phone here. You've got plenty of devices. How do we stay safe on all these devices? Yeah, it's funny. The, the instruments and the devices we use to look at our sensitive financial data and make it convenient for us are the same systems that the bad guys use to make a window and break in and steal your stuff. So how do you protect yourself? One of the best things you can do is to always use a VPN, a virtual private network, when you're looking at sensitive material like your financial information. These are the kind of systems you'll find at home on your Wi-Fi. It requires a specific username, a password, so that the bad guys cannot easily access that. It's also encrypted so that whatever you're doing, it gets scrambled and makes it almost impossible to read. Some of employers will also offer a virtual private network with encrypted the data. So before you go and look at your own personal financial information, make sure you're using a secure system. The places you want to stay away from are open Wi-Fi areas like coffee shops and donut shops and restaurants that say, hey, use our free Wi-Fi. The bad guys love it when you do because that's less secure and they're looking at that to try to capture more information about you. Well, you're scaring me a little bit because I know I logged on to Star Starbucks Wi-Fi over the weekend. I mean, is it is it uh, still a threat if you're just checking your social media? Less of a threat. I'm talking about sensitive data that you, you don't want the bad guys to get easily access to, which would be like financials, medical records. Now, social media, it's a good point. That's where we go to play, but it's where the bad guys go to work. And what they're looking for is more personal information about you. They will follow you, they will friend you, they will like you, but they're not your friends. They will even do things that seem innocent. They'll put into a, like a group chat, hey, what was your first pet's name? What's your what was your first car? What was your high school oh. graduation? What was that? What was the name of your first teacher? And everybody logs in thinking that's kind of fun. But what they're doing is they're collecting more private information about you that they can turn around and try to pretend to be you and get into your accounts. So you want to be very careful what personal information you give out on social media. It's not just your friends that are looking at that. It's also the bad guys. I tell you what, it, it, there's so many opportunities uh, for fraud these days online. It's just, it's a little overwhelming, Craig, I have to tell you. Um, what about, you know what's been happening to me in the last 24 hours actually, is I've been getting a whole bunch of texts from a major retailer that I'm pretty sure are not coming from a major retailer. Can happen with emails too. Uh, how do we know if what we're looking at is, is real or a fraudster? Yeah, it's really hard because uh, the bad guys are always really good about coming up with ways to pretend to be other people, including your retail establishments, your final, your financial institutions, your insurance providers. They, they, it's called spoofing, where they'll send you a text or an email pretending to be from that company. And the purpose of that is they're trying to get you to give up more information that they can use to break into your accounts. So these uh, text messages and these emails will be asking you to give up your login number, your password. Uh, your, your, your security question answers, things like that. Keep in mind that your bank, your credit union will never send you a text, will never send you an email asking you to give up this kind of personal information. So if you get an email like this or a text message like this, simply delete that correspondence, then contact that institution directly. Uh, it's great advice for sure. I mean, it's, I tell you, it's scary stuff. Uh, Clark County Credit Union, you have this amazing program. I believe it's called Bonsai, and it's all part of your kind of educational outlook. You're, you're looking to keep people informed and engaged in their finances. Yes, it's a free financial resource. Anybody can log on there and read that and has great information all about how to protect yourself, how to protect your accounts, how to protect your credit and your identity. And there's great articles on there, and it's free to use. Please explore it as much as you like. It's an excellent resource. Thank you for reminding us that we can we can go there. By the way, uh, Clark County Credit Union, I see your, your signs all over. How many locations? 
in Southern Nevada? We have six, yeah, six full service branches throughout the Valley. The entire Valley is covered, which is, uh, so we've got you covered great. And plus our mobile banking, you do almost all of your banking right on your phone. So your closest branch is in your pocket, actually. Can I mention another thing about those emails Please. that you may get? Yes. All right, here, I'll give you some red, I'm going to give you some red alerts to look out for it. So, you know, red that alerts, you're looking folks. At a legitimate email. So if you get an email and it's from your bank or your credit union or somebody pretending to be from there, one of the things you want to look is the return address. If it's a really complicated return address, something you haven't seen before, that is a red flag. If there are grammatical errors, if there's misspellings in the body of the text, that is a red flag. If it is threatening in nature, keep in mind your legitimate businesses do not operate that way. So if it's threatening in nature, red flag. If there's a call to action, if somebody's wanting you to click on a link or to make a phone call that they've provided, that's a red flag. If you get any of these red flags, do not return the correspondence, do not click on a link, do not make a phone call, simply delete that correspondence and then contact your institution directly. Greg, thank you so much for sharing all those red flags. We want people to be safe. Man, they earn their money. They deserve to keep it. And they're coming at us from every angle. So it's good to, to have those reminders. Thank you so much, uh, Craig, for joining us today from Clark County Credit thank Union. Thank you.